I assume you can hear me because I. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I, while that while that comes up, an observation. Well, I'm sure you've had the same observation. We have this recurring theme, or a recurring theme. There's more than one. A recurring theme is this this intersection of, of class and right? And again, that's probably no surprise. One of the few things older than glass is. Um, this, of course, was not lost on the UN, right? Because we had the International Year of Glass, as you know, and then in 2015, we had the International Year of Light, right? So again, th there's been this symbiotic relationship for all of time, right? Um, so, so I'm thinking about this, and it's like, oh, God, you know, how's Blada going to talk about that we haven't already said with respect to glass and light? And, and one thing occurred to me, which is that in all of these cases, Art, art, you know, the use of glass for art for architecture, right? The glass, or, or the, 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 the uh, conspiracy of glass and light, um, is visible right, to the user. Right? The glass here that I'm going to try to quickly to talk through, optical fiber, glass in the form of an op optical fiber, and, and the light in the form of laser light going through it. In, in most cases, unlike all the other previous ones, it's invisible, right? You, you know it's there, and you demand it to be there because we come to places like this, and you expect your Wi-Fi, right? You get mad when, it, you, know, when you don't have it, right? Or, or Zoom, or you know, all, all the things. So, so the, the, the embodiment today of, of, of glass in fiber, light, in as a laser, right? In this in this construction, is is invisible. So we, we want to forget the pun, bring that to light. Um, all right. Yeah. It's not intuitive, is it? The, the, the next button is actually not. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. All right. Any more coffee? Uh, or maybe I don't. Um, can't talk about the future without talking about the past. Right. At least that's that's what I believe. Okay. That's accurate. That's what I believe. Um, so let's uh, let's talk, let's go back a little bit. You saw one of these pictures. You didn't see the other two, right? So Wendell showed you the one on the right with the Yippee. Right? Actually, I, I have a picture of the full notebook cage. Right? So Don Keck Yippee 20, you know, sub 20. You, you know parts of that. But that 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 realization was necessary, but not sufficient by itself. Right? There were two prior innovations. Inventions, innovations. We can talk about that too, but, but nonetheless. Um, so this piece of the puzzle, the story, begins on the left, right? Charles Towns. Well, Charles Towns is one of three, but uh, recipients of the Nobel Prize in 1964 in physics for the invention of the, the, the maser, microwave version of what today is the laser, um, conceptualized a few blocks from here, Franklin Square, right? About two blocks, yeah, yeah, some way. Okay? So let there be light, right? It's the beginning of this story, right? But again, that, in, that is also necessary but insufficient, right? The person in the middle, Charles Cow, um, right, so 19, this is 1966-ish, is when his paper came out, uh, received the Nobel Prize in 2009, if I remember, um, for the, um, the appreciation, the study of and, and, and then the, 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 the vision that um, glass in the form of an optical fiber, through which this new thing called laser, or by that point, new thing called laser light, could propagate with sufficiently low loss, which means over long enough distances, right, to be of value for communications. Okay. Then our friends from Corning Right. With these two pieces, say, we have to go and do this, and that's where this comes along. So, so all three of those together are, or meet the necessary and sufficiency conditions. Okay. And as is true with most transformative technologies, you see you know, stepwise changes in, in, in some measure of, 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 of performance or, or value. Right? This happens to be uh, something that scales with capacity. Right, over, over, you know, almost 200 years. Um, you know, telegraphy, telephony, you know, waveguides in the form of coaxial cables. But again, what you have here is the fact that you have metals and electrons, right? All the information is, is traveling 
in that form through that material, right? What you begin then to see, 60s, 70s, really jumping into the 80s, uh, is the transformation of electrons and metal to light and glass. There's that theme again, right? In the form of a fiber. And again, that's also a recurring theme, right? Because we talked previously yesterday about composition and how important composition is. Form, right? Again, when there's a, a, a bulk piece or a fiber or a thin film, right, right. So, so it's composition and it's form. But there's another, there's one other piece, because those two are also necessary but insufficient. We'll get to that in a minute. If I can get tell. So that was a very, very quick walk down memory lane. Um, but again, we're here in D, we're two, we're two blocks. We're two blocks somewhere, I don't know where we are, two blocks from the birthplace of the laser. Think about that for a minute. As you're thinking to, you know, yesterday, as you're thinking about glass and all things glass, right, it's, you know, partner, past, present, and future, you know, was, was conceptually invented down the street. A better place, I don't know if you took that into account, Kathleen, when you when yeah. I said, let's, let's, yeah. let's have it here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, you, but I'm going to say that you did. <laughs> okay, so what does that invisible light plus glass look like? Right. Well, I mean, you talk about a world wide web, it really is. Right. And Wendell mentioned, you know, five billion kilometers of fiber since the first installations. I thought it was closer to six, and so I made a little typo later on, but uh, let's go with this number. Uh, he would know better. Um, but you know, these are the trunk lines. These are these, you know, when you when you pick up the phone, when you when you zoom with your class, like I was doing this morning, and I wasn't supposed to be. Um, you know, that's that's where all that information is going. That's where all that fiber is. You don't see it, but it's there. But you demand it every day. Okay. The the picture on the top is what those cables look like going under the ocean for you not to see. Okay. Um, and then of course closer to home, slightly data centers and things along those lines. Staggering volumes and growth in glass, and you know it's it's partnered with light. Um, and this is still the present piece of the of the, of the deck, right? Uh, again, you saw elements of this. Actually, any of my corning friends, uh, I got that slide on the left from you, and it's a little dated, so I greatly appreciate a newer version. <laughs> <laughs> got it. But but again, um, this is, it formed its function for, and utility here. But you can see the growth. You, you don't see economic slowdowns in. in Right? I mean, you may in the profitability, but, but nonetheless, glad, you know, the use of glass in optics for communications is growing and growing and growing. Right? What that means is the time over which, say, a certain volume doubles or length doubles, you know, gets shorter and shorter and shorter. Um, it, it was portrayed to you a couple different ways so far, but I'm just going to go aggregate length, right? You're out past Neptune or, or the, the planet formerly known as Pluto. Um, <laughs> all right, there, there's my six. Uh, I should make that a five. Okay, so the future. The, be the beauty, I was going to say this to our panel next, uh, the beauty of projecting the future is you never have to be right. So, um, I, am happy, I am happy to do this for you. Um, so our friends from Optica, I don't know if they're still here, but they were the other day. The, the panel on the left comes from them. Uh, I'll get back to Optica in a minute, but um, again, I, I, I appreciate it's hard to see it, but this is looking forward in time, and these are projections for growth in um, ver various aspects of communication uh, uh, technologies and, and distances and things along those lines, right? Um, and you know, you see that they're all growing, and they're dotted lines, and you know, there's a lot, whatever. But they're growing, they're growing, they're growing. None of this happens without glass. Right? Again, you don't, have to, you don't see it, but it's there. Um, the thing on the right, which is where I tend to spend most of my time, is in the, um, this happens to be for, for fiber, high power fiber lasers. Um, and what you see there is over time, again, uh, you see this staggering growth in output power. And there's a continuing demand for this, okay? Um, just to give you a, a data point, you know, a, a laser pointer is about five milliwatts, right? These are kilowatts, right? So a million, a million laser pointers, in essence, focused into something the size of your hair. Think about that for a minute. Mm -hmm. the, 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 um, the intensity, right? So, the, so that power divided by the, the cross-sectional area of that core, that exceeds the brightness, the, you know, effectively, again, area, intensity, area, of the surface of the sun. 
by 500 for almost 100,000. I mean, again, think of what you're asking those poor silica atoms. <laughs> molecules, sorry, molecules. Um, but again, that begins to set the stage and, and, and predicts kind of where this future has to go. Okay? And again, we focus a lot on telecom because you know, the markets and the volumes and things like that. But you see these types of fibers and laser light coursing through them, uh, showing up in a greater extent in, in, in laser machining, laser manufacturing, all your you know, advanced products are, are, are done this way, right? Cutting welds, those things. Drilling, right? Drilling with lasers, sensors, outside the body, inside the body, right? Uh, directed energy like we just talked about, signs, right? The other beauty of, uh, of, of glass in the form of an optical fiber with laser light is that it is not only it's not only its utility, you make things with it, it is also its own little laboratory. Right? You can do fundamental science because you take this light and you can, and you can confine it down to next to nothing. Right? And because you've been able to do that and you can, you can propagate it over very, very long distances, nominally weak, virtually non-existent phenomena add up and you can see those and you can take advantage of them. Okay, so, uh, First day Brown, I, I thought about trying to borrow it, because you had a Ceramic Society uh, logo periodic name. Well, I, I, um, I, pre past president is supposed to get that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. um, we're not as lucky in the fiber optic world because process, right? So that was the thing that was left out, right? Composition is important, form is important, process is important. How do you make the Hey, uh, uh, so even a roof's got one. Okay, um, how you make the glass, as you know, is equally important. I can make the exact same composition into the same fiber two different ways, and one will work and one will horribly fail, right? So, so process or processing is equally important. So the way that commodity optical fiber is made, for very good reasons, Volume, low loss, intrinsically low loss, right? Um, the process takes the periodic table and, and, and slims it down to next to nothing. Now, again, this is maybe not entirely fair because you could you can always throw a little dash of this, a little dash of this, but, but in, in, in terms of the kind of substantive compositional modifications, right? Periodic table is much smaller. Okay, um, this is in, this has enabled. Everything that you know today in terms of information technology, data, to, uh, data to, um, it also is somewhat limiting because the future demands more, always will demand more, right? Um, so I'm gonna give you two trends, at least, uh, again, in my mind, with the added benefit of not having to be right. Um, one is this doing less with more, or make silica do less with more, right? Uh, because again, it ain't going away, and it shouldn't go away. It's an amazing material, wonderfully linear made at high uh, volumes, very, very ridiculously fast speeds, intrinsically low loss, intrinsically high strength, right? But, but can you make it do more? So I'll give you two examples of this. And again, this is kind of out of our playbook. So you know, if I get to tell a story, you get to hear my story. Um, one is, um, you know, again, going back and, and putting other things, again, there's maybe historically nothing new here, but you can use chemistry a little bit more now than you can then. Um, again, nanoparticle doped glasses, right? These are compatible with the commercial processes, right? So you, you take a commercial silica fiber, what, what looks like, tastes like, performs like a silica fiber, con, you know, commodity silica fiber, but you dope it with nanoparticles. And, and again, if you do this well or right, you can and put, for example, your active dopants into the nanoparticle. But that nanoparticle acts as a um, as a separate environment, and, and it and it and it um, and it buffers the active dopants from the other either photonic or phononic right environment of the silica itself. So you get all the benefits of the silica, but you get the enhancements of say various <coughs> dopants inside of these nanoparticles. Um, we, we get depending upon what the system is, we get increases in efficiency for everything else, looking, feeling, tasting like a silicon fiber. Increases in efficiency, especially high power. Even just a percent, a small percent more efficient is, is a huge thing. Um, we've made fibers cool. 
you know, you know laser is hot, right? I mean, that's a, that's the perception, right? So, so lasing a glass in the form of a fiber and getting it to cool is not only counterintuitive; it, it's a it's a huge improvement in having to deal with thermal issues, thermal management, by letting the light in the glass do the work for you, which is good to be another. Thing. So that's one thing. Um, that's the thing on the bottom in the set, center there, nanoparticle fibers that cool. Okay. Okay. I uh, know. I was actually I was talking to somebody about this last week, and um, this is something of an anathema to us, us as a glass community. But uh, there is also a, an enabling trend in fiber to remove as much of the glass as possible. Right. So these hollow core types of there are myriad a myriad of designs. But hollow core fibers and, and, and using the wave guiding properties of the of the geometry, you know, and, and these are very low latency. In other words, I mean, the, the light is propagating through essentially air as opposed to glass, dominantly. So, so the speed of light, you know, Steve Feller said, the speed of light is always the speed of light. But uh, in terms of getting from A to B, it gets there faster because it, it doesn't have to slog through the, the glass. So lower latency, virtually zero nonlinearity, because again, there's no there's no glass. Um, so, so maybe turning our, our um, thinking from glass to glass enabled, right? Because again, there is no fiber without the glass. There's just less of it. But, uh, you know, again, it's got to be there. Uh, I mean, this has the potential to be transformative in, in a number of aspects of, of fiber-related uh, optics. Um, opening up the periodic table. Uh, this is one of my favorite topics. Um, and again, you say, ah, semiconductors, right? Crystals, you know, silicon, germanium, silicon, germanium, combinations of those things, right? Can you, and this is again this opening up trend two, opening up the periodic table, um, materials or, or, or elements on the periodic table, compounds, combinations of elements on the periodic table, um, that, that you cannot, you either do not form into a glass or cannot be drawn into a fiber. Again, we would normally say, well, that can't be done. But it can. Can you envision? The opportunities where all that we can do with, uh, with electronics and optoelectronics on chip can be brought inside of the fiber, right? So in fiber chips, in fiber optoelectronics, the marriage of fiber optics and, and, and planar photonics, silicon photonics, those things, merging these. So again, these are, see, crystalline, silicon, inside of a glass, drawn into a fiber over kilometers, you use conventional commercial methods to do this at high yields, long lengths, the losses don't matter because again, it's, you know, you're only using little bits of it, but you use the scalability to your benefit. Um, but again, glass enabled because you can't do this without the glass cladding that, that the, uh, the semiconductor is going along for the ride with, okay? And then again, there's a whole body of literature and some commercial products now, right, where Again, glass enabled, but the fiber is more than just the glass, or the multiple types of glass, right? Organic, shh, organic glasses, right? <laughs> right? Not oxide glass. No, I can say that one here in this audience. Non-oxide glasses, right? Organic glasses, right? Silicon glasses, right? Um, all and and some metals, right? But 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 again, this whole idea of of the fiber is not. Just this, you know, this this hair thin, long, passive window getting light from A to B, right? But, 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 and you know, the next step in terms of the function was were active fibers, amplifiers, lasers, and things like that, where the fiber was doing more. But there's so much more now that the fiber is able to do because we can put more stuff into it in symbiotic ways, right? So bringing the the uh, the functions of the chip into the fiber, as an example, or the sensing functions of all these different types of materials into the fiber, right? The beauty of the fiber, of fiber, right? Setting aside the material, the beauty of the fiber is, is, is its form and its, and its fabrication, <laughs> scalability, right? So doing more with what you already have while you are also kind of enlarging back that periodic table that I'm gonna steal from for Ruder today. Um, all right, lastly, uh, this is where it comes, op optic comes back. So fibers and lasers, glass and light, right? This construction. Just getting started, right? 50 years later, you know, from the, from the beginnings, again, just getting started. That's why it's so exciting. Um, 
remember, it's, it's the combination of these things. It's the glass in the form of the fiber with the laser. Right? Not just glass anymore. Um, all these possible opportunities, marrying those three things, right? The form, the composition, the form, the process, right? And bringing these other things. And uh, I, uh, <laughs> you're probably the only community that's going to is going to appreciate this. Um, I got asked to write a, a, a feature or an article, you know, for the International Year Class for Optica's Optical Society's member magazine. And so I'll, I'll leave you with how I concluded that. Right? And if I could go through all that whole thing, it's a befriended class scientist. Let nature do the work for you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, you would appreciate that. I don't know that they did. <laughs> but, uh, but that's how, because I believe that. Right? I, I mean, the beauty of, of, of glass, of availing oneself of the periodic table, right, with light, with, uh, with light, laser or not laser, um, is that we use the periodic table, we, we, engineer, we engineer nature through the process, or processing, right? But we are always fundamentally taking advantage of what nature gives us. Right? So if, if people start, if random like optics people start calling you, blame me. <laughs> All right, so I think with that, thank you.